Good evening and welcome to this special episode of the Buck Stops here coming to you live like every night from Uttarakhand. We are in Gocha today quite near the air base where the day after 20 people were killed in the air crash of a rescue operation. The evacuations are still on. In one sense the show is going on. After a moving tribute by the Air Force to all those who died in that chopper crash, Operation Rahat issuing such a moving, such an inspiring statement where the men and women of the Air Force saluted their colleagues, not just from the Air Force, but also from the other agencies, the ITBP, who died in that crash, saying that their sacrifice meant more to those who are still carrying out the rescue operations, more to them than any pilgrim could. They also spoke about how these countrymen of theirs had sacrificed their lives without paying any attention to color, caste, creed or religion. The Air Force Chief also here to motivate his troops. We'll be looking at really the immense valor of our men and women in uniform and contrasting the selfless soldier with the publicity seeking politician. And today is a really apt day to talk about the publicity seeking politician. Although we have tried to leave petty politics out of our coverage of Uttarakhand because we believe the real story lies elsewhere. But just look at these images. These images from Dehradun, these images are of clashes between the Congress and the TDP, both political parties from Andhra Pradesh, literally in fisticuffs, almost beating each other up. And what were they fighting about? Over who would get to take flood survivors back home with them in their aircraft. Can you imagine how pathetic, how pathetic politics can sometimes be? Are politicians looking for a photo op while our soldiers are working selflessly? Before we look at what that political image represents, let's talk about the real stories that are happening on the ground because we here on the ground in Uttarakhand believe that this kind of politicking should not be given as much space as the real stories on the ground. And on the ground, the Air Force Chief was here to motivate his troops and he made an amazing statement. He told us that when he met his troops, he actually told them that he would like to see them smiling, even though 20 people had died. Because he said, like in a war, there is no option but to keep going. The roar of the helicopters over the Gocher Air Base made its own statement the morning after 20 people, Air Force officers and personnel of the ITBP and the National Disaster Response Force were killed as a rescue chopper crashed. This was the sound of courage, firm, relentless, selfless. As the Air Chief touched down to meet his troops, he came with one primary message. I want to see you all smile, he told his men. You have to keep going, keep flying, like you would in a time of war. This morning, the luxury of grief was not available to the comrades and colleagues of those who died. Well, any time you lose people, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a good feeling. Uh, but then I think it's for their sake and the fact that we lost these lives, uh, we have to finish the mission and finish it right. So even while para-commandos were dropped at the crash site and search teams set out on foot to find the bodies of those on board the ill-fated Mi-17, air evacuations had already resumed for the Badrinath Valley, pushing the boundaries of duty yet again. Sir, uh, there is such a thing as taking too many risks. Is there any sense that you will now review the number of risks heroically that your forces have been taking uh, to save lives? Is there a sense that the envelope of safety was pushed? Well, uh, uh, all that I would say is that uh, in the mountains, especially during the monsoon weather, weather is always an issue. But at this point of time, we are not quite sure whether it was the weather or was there any technical problem. The weather seemed to mock this moment of national grief. On the ground, the sun teased the hovering clouds with a rare appearance. But in the upper reaches of the Kedarnath Valley, the weather did not permit choppers carrying wooden key for mass cremations to land. 
For days now, more than a hundred bodies have lain at Kedarnath. Their families will never even get to say goodbye. Rescue operations, after all, must prioritize saving those still alive. And these bodies must be cremated where they lie. But help could come from perfect strangers. We meet these volunteers who have offered to go up to Kedarnath and perform the last rites. They've already made one attempt, but their chopper was turned back by the turbulent skies. Tell me that the Mi-17 crash has been crashed. It doesn't seem like it's a danger. It means that it's a little bit of danger. Look, we belong to Sikh Dharam. And our children have been put in our mind. That death will not come, but the place and the place that we will go there. The bodies that have been buried on the top of the bodies. It's not that you knew those people. So how did you come to your mind that they had a dignity that has been in the last rites. And I don't even know which people of the dharm are, because death does not discriminate on the basis of religion. It's the great equalizer. So how did you come to your mind that those people who you don't know, what do you want to do for them? Look, the people who are living in the world don't see any religion or religion. If water comes, they don't choose to say that I will kill Muslims or Hindus or Hindus or Hindus or Hindus or Hindus. If there is no difference in the human being, then why do we do it? They were our country, we were with them, we didn't know what happened. But if they have to be with us, how can we go back? If they don't stay, what happened? They are their bodies. And so, on the one hand, there are stories of amazing courage, compassion and hope. But on the other hand, it seems to be a relentless tragedy, one of staggering intensity. And as if all this were not bad enough, there is hostility from both the air and the earth. The weather, of course, playing challenger to the air evacuations. And on the ground, landslides like the one you see behind me, repeatedly breaking down road links, leaving many families who are looking for their loved ones stranded. Many families we meet are now beginning to give up hope. In Chandigarh, one such family was rescued from Kedarnath. But today, being alive is almost of little solace to parents who have had to return home without their daughter. Ashutosh and Dimple Sharma were at Kedarnath with their two children and Dimple's mother when a giant wave lashed against them and swept 10-year-old Anandata and Dimple's aging mother away. The father, still a believer, even now, hopes for a miracle. The situation was there, I had told Chandigarh that both of them were finished. But when I was thinking about God, they were taken to Ashirwad, they were taken to the house, they were taken to the house, then I didn't believe it. Until now, I didn't see the body, it's very difficult to believe that they are not in our midst. It's possible that the person is fine with the time. Everything Dimple, however, a grieving mother and a devastated daughter both has questions for the God she trekked up to worship. I am just so angry for God's sake that why did he show us like this? Why did he show us like this? Why did he show us like this? Because we are always a dharmic place where we have a program when we have to go here or there. So that's why I have to go there भगवान को उसके बाद प्रणाम नहीं किया मैंने नहीं केदारनाथ जी में माथा टेका फिर इस बार तो मुझे इतना गुस्सा आ रहा था भगवान पे कि इतनी शरदा से हम आए हैं डोल गई शरदा भी डोल गई हमारी वहाँ जाके The Uttarakhand tragedy unfolding in the abode of the gods has shaken the bedrock of belief and yet as the blades of these choppers keep turning the human spirit still endures In Uttarakhand with Manoj Thakur and Ruby Thingra Barkhadat for NDTV so as you can see, some faithful continue to believe and continue to pray. But others who came here to Kedarnath to worship now feel that their belief is shaken. They want to know why their God has not shown them compassion. So many questions with the relief operations here have really been about the endurance of the human spirit. And not just the military or the ITBP alone, those volunteers who, who have offered their services to go up to Kedarnath to offer death and dig to dignity and death to perfect strangers. Some very, very moving and inspiring stories here. And it has been really inspiring to see the stoicism with which rescue operations have continued, even as paracommandos have been dropped at the crash site to look for the bodies of those who went down. My colleague Nitin Gokhale is now joining, with, uh, joining me to tell us a little bit about what the complications are at the uh, crash site. Nitin, since last night, we, they, they were first garuds on the ground. They can see at night. They were looking for the bodies. Since then, you've had paras dropped. Uh, you've had search parties on foot. 
and we now have 17 bodies recovered but we are in no position at this moment to even give a final farewell or a send off to those who went down uh, in the Mi-17. What are the complications? Well, the compli before I tell you the complications, let me just say, uh, just now I've got a news that four bodies have now uh, been flown to Dehradun. So one step forward, a uh, half a step forward. Four really. of those 17. Four of those 17 which were found at the crash site have been flown uh, ahead to Dehradun so that post-mortem can be conducted there. But having said that, uh, the complication was that the helicopter crashed in a very narrow valley in a gorge which was 300 uh, feet uh, down uh, on a steep slope. Now, uh, when the uh, helicopter went missing yesterday, the first thing that the uh, Air Force did was, apart from sending uh, Mi-17 and other helicopters to search for this helicopter, they launched a C-130J Hercules, a high, highly capable uh, plane from Hinden, yeah. uh, because it can uh, catch uh, infrared images or also has sensors which can catch, catch heat hmm. uh, emanating anywhere. Uh, they came, in, came over, uh, overhead, they tried to locate uh, but they couldn't because there was uh, thick cloud cover. Then a Mi-17, another Mi-17 located the wreckage site, but that Mi-17 couldn't uh, communicate uh, to base to tell them. So that Mi-17 communicated to C-130, uh, which was overhead high up, and that C-130 uh, told the uh, air control. Just drives home just how drives complicated, home complicated it is. And then it today is. men are actually And yesterday the men were the dropped. Then the, the men found that there were two, two small numbers because there were uh, wild bears in that area, and uh, they had no arms because they need, did not need arms there. So then the uh, army's para commandos, 26 of them were launched last night to link up with, with them. With arms. With arms. Uh, they also have uh, small arms, of course, but they wanted bigger arms. So they linked up uh, in, in the morning today. So now 38 of them are searching and widening the search for bodies. And specially uh, arms were brought in from elsewhere, big arms, big guns. And they were dropped uh, so that tonight when they stay there, they're still there, mind you. They have been there for more than 24 hours, the Garuds and the, now the army commandos. And uh, they will now protect themselves with those arms, but they're continuing the search. We still don't know whether they'll find all the bodies, but that's the complication. Absolutely a staggering uh, uh, heroism and as if uh, everything that they're dealing with was not enough uh, to now have to be, uh, to go down to a crash site, to arm yourself, to now combat not just the weather, not just the crash, but also wild bears. This is what our forces are going through on the ground. And what are our politicians doing? Let's just take you back to that absolutely disgusting image out of Dehradun airport today. The Congress and the TDP. The Congress and the TDP in fisticuffs. What are they fighting over? Both had booked planes to actually take survivors of the floods back home. We believe that the Congress leader Hanumanta Rao first approached those who were accompanying the TDP and we are also getting reports that Hanumanta Rao actually said, we'll give you 5,000 rupees, please get off the TDP bus and come with us. And the resulting uh, uh, fracas is really a moment of shame for everybody because when you contrast it with what's happening here on the ground, it is so entirely irrelevant, but it is so entirely in contrast to the valour and the modesty of that valour that we are seeing here on the ground by our forces. Let's just bring you, let's just bring you one such story of valor. Nitin Gokhale spoke to an honorary flying officer who had the option one month before he retired to get a desk job, but he chose to come here. Throughout this operation, Rahat, one has seen dedication and commitment from all forces and especially the Indian Air Force. But here is one more example of a man committed to his duties just a month before his retirement. Satinder ji, you are going to retire in a month and you are still here with your duty. What kind of country are you from here? I feel proud of coming for this mission at the very fag end of my service career of 38 years, long service. And I operated as a flight gunner, air crew from Sri Lanka operation to till date. All the major military operations in India and neighboring countries, I have participated everywhere. I have also participated in uh, Congo UN mission, peacekeeping mission, and uh, this is very one of the very biggest. I have seen many many uh, flood operations, and I have uh, participated. But this is one of the very biggest uh, flood relief operations. Is it very satisfying for you to come and serve the people? Yeah, definitely, it is very much uh, satisfying for me, and I have lot many admin jobs. Uh, pre-retirement to do at my base right. and yet you are here and yet I am here and I feel proud of it and uh, I'll, within a day or two most probably I'll be going back where but will you I'm, go back and where will you retire I'm, and settle down I am based at Hindon I'm, uh, my unit is, is at Hindon 
and I'm also settling down at Ghaziabad only. Right. And uh, your children and your family must be feeling very proud that despite uh, the fact that you are going to retire in the next uh, one month or so, you are here uh, committed to your duty. What message will you give to the Air Force uh, when you retire? Uh, my family feels very proud of it. They are waiting back at home. And uh, I give the uh, leave the message to all air, air warriors of Indian Air Force. Do the duty sincerely, punctual with full punctuality and sincerity. Somebody is there to recognize the job. Great, Sajinder Singh ji. All the best for your retired you. life. I'm sure you'll have a new innings to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. How modest was that last sentence from the honorary flying officer? Somebody is there to recognize us. But the truth is that we recognize our men and women in uniform only in times of crisis. And then when the crisis lapses into normalcy, we tend to forget them. Well, on this program on the buck stops here tonight, we're committing to not doing that. Let's introduce our guest tonight. We're joined by uh, Air Commodore Rajesh Isser. He's joining us from Dehradun. From Lucknow tonight, we're joined by uh, Brigadier Uma Maheshwar. He's, of course, been the information coordinator for this entire rescue operation. And Air Commodore uh, Isser has, of course, been the task force commander for the entire operation Rahat as well. And earlier, I spoke to the chief of the ITBP, Ajay Chadda, as well. The ITBP has suffered major, major blows and also done a heroic job. And let me just start with Ajay Chadda. Uh, Mr. Chadda, the motivation of the troops at this time of great loss. How do you keep your troops motivated? What have you been telling them? Uh, our troops are well trained and well disciplined and the motto of the force is valor, steadfastness and commitment. So at all times they are committed to the task ahead of them and uh, they do their uh, whatever task is assigned to them they do it to the best of their capacity in whatever the circumstances. Now, now sir, for you, it's been a, a particularly, uh, I, I would imagine, a personally difficult time because till, till just a couple of days ago, you were not just the head of the ITBP, but you were also uh, had additional charge of the uh, NDRF, the National Disaster Response Force, and the NDRF lost nine of its men. So this is really a, a, a deep personal loss for you. Yes, Barkha, indeed, it's a huge personal loss and tragedy. Uh, I would, uh, uh, the loss is even graver because the nine persons in NDRF also, they belong to ITBP, a regular ITBP battalion, and they are on second band to NDRF. So as a result, the toll is 15 for ITBP. So at a time when there's no time for mourning, how do you, how do you keep your troops motivated? No, there is no time for grief and mourning and uh, they don't have to be told anything. They know what is the task ahead and what they have to do. They are trained as soldiers and they perform their uh, duties as a soldier. Trained as soldiers and perform their duties as a, as a soldiers. If only our politicians could learn from that. We'll come back to Mr. Chadha. Let's go to uh, Air Commodore Isser and Brigadier Maheshwar. Uh, Air Commodore, to you first. Uh, we met uh, the Air Chief when he was here and he said something very remarkable uh, when we asked him, how are you motivating your troops and what did you tell them when you, when you met them? And he said, I told my men and women that you have to keep smiling. And I, and I said to the air chief, smiling, and he said, yes, smiling. There is no option but to keep going. There's a job to be done. Just like in a war, you have to keep going. Now, these are remarkable words, sir, but I can't, I, I can't imagine it's that easy for the men and women who have lost people close to them, people they've known, their colleagues in that crash. Yeah, true, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, as I've been uh, saying since morning, uh, just echoing the chief's commitment, uh, uh, his comments, that uh, the biggest tribute to these uh, boys, in not only our air warriors uh, and the officers, but the NDRF and ITBP, these were the first guys who went in, the first lot. They've done a remarkable job, and at the end of it, whatever happened, our tribute, nothing could be a better tribute than make sure that the job they started you know, ends well in the manner that they were doing. A Commodore Isser, uh, talk, talk, talk a little bit about the tribute, a very moving tribute that we saw uh, from the Operation Rahat uh, team today talking about how uh, 
they owed it to those who had died to get out every man and woman who may still be trapped. But they also spoke about how they were filled with respect for their countrymen who, with no attention to colour, caste, creed or religion, had gone in to save other people's lives. They had a very moving sentence there that their sacrifice meant more than any, any pilgrimage could, in a sense. So this tribute, what does it convey? What is, what, what is its deeper message? Uh, uh, you know, uh, we've seen commitment on the ground. I mean, there are some negatives uh, that the press is bringing out, but we've seen a lot of positives, not only from uh, the administration, which was completely overwhelmed, and I, I think which did uh, remarkably well under the circumstances, in terms of uh, this air ev evacuation, which we were part of. Uh, we've seen some very uh, motivated individuals, including volunteers at our Jolly Grand base, uh, who've been working as much as us, and uh, I don't know where their motivation comes, because we are trained, and we are trained to, uh, you know, do this job in war and peace. Uh, but I don't know, a civilian, a normal volunteer, students, uh, it's amazing. So when you see them, you realize uh, everybody is committed to the task in hand. In fact, uh, Barkha, I must tell you that even today, one day after the crash, uh, we still rescued 1,300 people today despite weather, whenever it cleared up. And that shows uh, what the chief said, the show must go on.